you told him... What are you doing here? He isn't here yet, huh? I have told you that there isn't anybody else. You say that to me right here in this place? Oh, and why don't you ask me why I'm here? I don't have to ask you anything. I know why you're here. I'm here because Maria's sick, and she needs my help. Good Samaritan? To a servant I fired for thieving? She was kind to me. That's why I helped her. In the middle of the night, when I'm supposed to be away on business. Would you have ever let me come here any other time? And that? I suppose that's for Maria. Coco was getting a little over his work, eh? What do you mean, old? He just stepped in a chuck hole back there, that's all. Yeah, I've been noticing. A lot more holes around here than there used to be. Maybe there are, maybe there are. You know that uh, trip you're going on tomorrow? That ain't no Sunday ride through back pasture. What do you mean? Well, meaning I broke in that new stallion you like. Won't you take him along tomorrow? Give you a chance to get to know one another. Big Duke? Sure. Oh, well, maybe you're right, maybe. Maybe old Coco here does need a rest. Maybe you're right. Well, yeah, old Coco here, he's earned retiring twice over. Retiring? Who said anything about retiring? Not me. Old Big Duke, you know, he's got a lot younger outlook. May even be able to give you a more uh, personal hand at picking out them blue mares, huh? Well, he's all ready for you, Nick. Who's that? Big Duke, he's all saddled and ready to go. Big Duke, what's the matter with Coco? Is Nothing's he... the matter with Coco. He's fine, just fine. He just needs a little rest, that's all. How old's he getting to be now? I wouldn't know. He's not as ancient as you seem to think he is. He's 22. At least I remember seeing a picture of the two of you when you were both skinny coats. You remember? I remember. First two months, he used to throw me twice a day. <laughs> well, he's about holding to that average now. Now, wait a minute, Heath. What happened yesterday was an accident. I told you that. He stepped in a chuck hole. I know, Coco. A man grows up with his horse, he knows that animal. Besides, old Coco will be cutting cattle long after this big duke of yours is in a rocking chair. 
Well, Nick, I know how hard it's going to be, so you'd have to put him out to pasture, but... Pasture? Who said anything about pasture? Besides, I've got to go across the desert. No cocoa can smell out water better than any camel. So you can take your big duke and unsaddle him and... Well, whatever. I'll be back in a couple of days, will I? Talk about stubborn. Let's take it. Drop your gun, Bill. You make much of a living this way, mister? Just do what I say. Now, you just come along with us. Could you just tell me where we're going? You'll find out soon enough. All right, let's move out. Pretty big mistake, mister. No, I think you've made one. Welcome to the club. It'll take five sticks of dynamite to blow your way through that window. What's all this about, anyway? You've got no right. This is the United States. We got the same treatment you did. You didn't give us no reason or nothing. My name's Gandhi. Barkley, Nick Barkley. This here's Bodkin. You sure they left that door? Kind of mistake, mister. I ain't done you no harm. I think at best you explain all this. This one, I would think. Well, the Apache could find out for sure soon enough. Well, what's your name? What's yours? I'm Ben Dawes. I own this country about as far as your eye can see. And the people who live on it, mostly. Mr. Dawes, I was just riding through here, minding my own business, and all I want to do is just keep on going. Take a look out that window. Oh, go on. What do you see? Horses. Just horses. A bit more, I should think. They all have white manes. Exactly. So, last night, I almost caught a man riding such a horse. He had been with my wife. Y your wife? Today, my men searched the valley and the town. There are three men riding horses with white manes. Look at me. I'm, I'm no ladies' man. You, you can see for yourself. Look, I swear I never set eyes on your woman. I don't want to. Mean no offense, of course. Never set foot in this country until this morning. 
All innocent. But one of you is him. Best the other two find out who he is. Let me know. And if we don't... When the sun tops the mountains tomorrow, you'll all hang together. You'll never get away with it. I will. I'm the law here, and the judge. As far as you can see in any direction. You, isn't it? I saw, I saw her, you know. The what? When they brought me in. She was standing in the window in the house. Yeah? What does she look like? China dolls, all soft, white, silk, lace. No wonder that old man is out to hang somebody. What makes you think it's him? Huh? Look at him. Young. <laughs> Good looking. I, I sure ain't no lady killer. Neither are you. Getting right down to it. She'd sure go for his kind, all right. That'll be enough out of you, little man. We don't need any kind of this loose talk around here at this minute, do you think? No, it was not him. Young and handsome. <laughs> Did you find it pleasant? Something for you, Mr. Dawes? No. No, Tony. Thanks, anyway. Beautiful tonight. It's almost like daylight. Yeah. Yeah, it's what we used to call a, a hunter's moon. Enough light, proper season, the right prey, 
Are you really going to go through with it, Mr. Dawes? I have to. When? Daybreak. Lord works in mysterious ways. He takes. But he gives. And I'm grateful. My own blood son. Couldn't stand quite as tall in my shadow as you do. Let me do the job for you. Oh, no, no. Keep no, your hands no, clean no, of it. Tony, no. <laughs> Look, all... All that out there is... Uh, all going to be yours one day to make something out of it. That'll be your job. That back there is mine, and mine alone. I must say, for a man that's about to hang, you don't look too worried. As a matter of fact, I'm not too worried. As a matter of fact, I know how to get out of here. You never said so before. Yep, well, I'm saying so now. What do you got in mind? Get out of my way, Mark Lee! in mind! It is him. Just like I said right from the beginning, I'll said he was the one. Well, get Dawes down here. Start yelling. Get it! Stop! Get it! Your man, Mr. Dawes. He said so himself. That's right. That's right. I heard him. You're lying. Oh, yeah, he was bragging about it. Only he said he wasn't going to die by himself. He said we was all going to hang together. Of course, I knew it was him even before he, before he said it. The way they looked at each other when she was down here. Of course, you saw that all yourself, Mr. Dawes. You saw them together. Well, there's your man. It figured to be like that. Get these two on their horses and get them out of here. the others go. But they're all innocent because I'm innocent. Can't you understand You're that? You're going to beg for his life now. Ben, please. No, please, why won't oh, you... Why didn't I just leave you where I found you? Ben, there isn't any man but you... No more. From now on, you're a prisoner. This house is your jail. You're going to be watched every second and followed every step. Day and night. And there's going to be no man. No man at all. For as long as you live.
husband's a madman and... Well, you saw how he was and he's gonna kill both of us. All right, just get me out of the cell here. Well, will you help me? All right, all right. I, I know the way out. Will you take me with you? Just anywhere, out of his reach. All right, but how do you get me out of the cell? Here. Huh? The key to the door. Good. No, but there's a guard up there. The Apache. Well, here goes. Let me take a look at it. Well, it's only a scratch. Uh, looks pretty deep to me. Come on, hurry. We've got to go. All right. Take it easy. All right. Doctor, is there one close? Yes, he's in town about five miles. I'm sorry. Sorry. Oh. Miss Dodge, come in. Sit over here. Clean wound. You're going to be all right, Miss Doss. You must be that fellow Ben Doss is looking for. Well, you won't get very far. We'll keep this bound up tight. Why not? You won't have any stitches in there. Well, a hundred horses couldn't take you far enough away. If Ben Dawes got his mind set on catching you. Oh, I don't know. I think I'll make it. And if you was figuring on taking her with you, you ain't. And I suppose you was figuring on taking her with you. You suppose right. Look, Dr. Ben was wrong about him. I just met him today. Yeah. Well, be pretty hard convincing him of that now, wouldn't it? We could have just waited around until Ben hung him. That's going to be as good as new in a couple of days now. now. You just sit there. Hey, you drink some of this. 
Make you feel better. You know, there's no stopping Ben Doss. You may have to kill him. Well, now, I just might have to do that. Gonna be a lot of folks uh, maybe not appreciate that. Meaning you, huh? huh. Well, you may not like what you see in me now, but you'd have liked me a lot less seven years ago before I met Ben Doss. Well, a Ben Dawes I knew would murder three men guilty or innocent. Mm. It's hard to figure. Man I know picked a bum out of the gutter and put some manhood back in his spine. Oh, I see. What you're saying is one good turn makes up for all the bad ones. Huh? No. As a matter of fact, this ain't the first time he's done something like that. Now, you take that young Tony Semper. The young fellow just drifting along, becoming a real no good. Ben Dawes picked him up, treated him like, like his own son, grooming him to step into his own boots when the time comes. What would you have us do, Doctor? Sing praises to the great Ben Dawes while he hangs us from the nearest tree? No. As a matter of fact, I hope you make it, both of you. Well... You best be gone. Miss Dawes, I'm not going to alert your husband. Man's got to pay for his own debts out of his own pocket, not out of somebody else's. All right, come on. One of them was cut, sure enough. Just the beginning of their suffering, boy. You know, I never really believed it, Mr. Dawes. I never believed she was guilty, but, but she helped him escape. She even went off with it. Just tell the boys it's $100 to the man who kills Barkley. trail, Doctor, right here to your house. You had visitors during the night? I did, sir. My wife was one of them. She was hurt. I fixed a cut on her arm. Did you know they were running away? Yes, I did. Thank you for that, Ben. I won't have to feel sorry for you anymore. Time you needed help, I gave it. And when you had no friends, I became one. And now, when I get back, I want you gone out of this valley. You understand me? I'll be gone, Mr. Dawes. Doctor, you helped them. Why? Because I'm a doctor, not a judge. I'm a man. I'm not some kind of a god. Coco here needs a little rest. Yeah. 
Not as uh, young as he used to be, you know. But he'll be all right. He'll be fine. Okay. I guess you're probably wondering about a lot of things. Oh, right. you can tell me about that sometime. No, you know, I, you've already re deserved the right to know. It wasn't always like this between Ben and me. Well, he was different when I first met him in San Francisco. Is that where you're from, San Francisco? Yeah. I never knew my parents. I was brought up by an aunt and... and one of my uncles. That was a very unhappy time. And then along came Ben Dawes. He was on town on business and... he... Well, he was just everything I'd always dreamed of. So you married him, huh? Yes. I loved him because he was big and strong and mature. And because he said he loved me. And he brought me here to his castle. I thought I was going to be Cinderella. But this castle turned out to be a dungeon, a prison. Oh, no, no, wait a minute. You don't have to go into all this. You no, know. I, mean, I want to. I... Well, it's because of me you got into all of this anyway. It, it won't take long. There's not much more. See, Ben changed. He became mean and cruel and jealous. And he never let me see anyone but the ranch hands and the people in town. And as you well know, he owns every single one of them. All those beautiful dreams he's going to make come true for me. They're all gone. <laughs> They're To get anywhere, we better get going before sunset, don't you think? Huh? Come on. You're right. Come on. What is it, Nick? Just a little breather is all. Oh, now, don't worry. We'll make it. Right now, I'd say we all need a rest. Don't you? very much help, am I? Oh, well, now, you're too pretty to have to work. I don't think I ever left the city until I met Ben. Well, that was just my luck. I like the city. I like all the lights and the fancy places to eat. I had two weeks of that when we were first married. It's all still there, you know. No, no. I think it's too late now. Oh, no, no. You know what they say, it's never too late. 
You really think so? I mean, to be a silly little girl again? Or a woman. I, I, I think that maybe the beans are just about ready. You better, better dive in there. Aren't you going to eat? In a minute. I just uh, shouldn't have brought old Coco along on this trip. I guess he's just a little bit too old for all this. How bad is he, Nick? Well, I'd say he's a... <laughs> You'll never get within 10 miles of that pony of yours. Juliet, uh, you... Sure, you know the way out of here. Yes. All right. Then. Tomorrow morning, first thing you hit the trail. You and that horse of yours get uh, out of here as fast as you can. You mean alone? It's the only way. Now you make twice the time we made today, and by tomorrow evening you'll be, you'll be safe and sound. No, Nick. I said yes. I'm not going anywhere without you. strength. Nick. The answer's still no. Like they're gaining on us.
horse fell. I see. Well, I'm sorry I ran out on you. I was just afraid, all right? That's all right. Where are you going? I'm not going to let that horse stay down there. But... Now, you wait here. You hear me? You wait right here. All right, but hurry back. Mercy. to kill me. Why? Tony! Why? Oh. You've picked yourself quite a pair, Mr. Doss. Juliet and me. With her dead, you, you'd never have known. It, it was her idea. The house in town, uh, the, the medicine. In case you ever found out. She's a clever girl, Juliet. Tony. Tony, not you. It was me and her all the time. I'm sorry. Now, you 
tell me about the horse with the white mane? That was your own horse. <laughs> Tony rode him that night. We always used to ride him. Oh, Ben, you're getting old. You don't remember things very good anymore. And you don't see things very good anymore either. You hear me? You're an old man. Would you get her out of here? suffer. broodmares I brought back with me. They're out in the corral. Well, looks like you had a rough trip. Oh, just average. Well, it took three more days than you planned. Why? Well, as a matter of fact, uh... I'll bet he met a pretty young girl somewhere. Matter of fact, I did. I thought so. I think I'll look at those mares you've been talking about. Well, I imagine you'll tell us all about it. That is, when you feel like it. Well, as soon as I get old Coco here bedded down, he... He had such a time chasing down them brood mares. He's just a little bit done in. What about Coco? Well, uh, he'll be staying here for a while. Uh, no more long, hard rides, just a lot of good rest. I guess sometimes the best way to hold on to something is to let it go. Know what I mean? Yes, Nick. I know what you mean. Lathrop. No, no, I don't think that'd be a wise idea to be seen traveling together. 
I'll catch the next stage out to Stockton. Well, I guess we say goodbye. Yes. Goodbye, Marcy. I wish things hadn't happened this way. It's all over now, isn't it? Yes, it's over. You go home. Go home to your husband and that son of yours. Jared, you've been wonderful to me. I'll never forget you. Sorry, Pa. I just can't seem to hit it. Nothing to worry about, Davy. You'll get the hang of it. How's the shoulder holding up? Kind of aches, but I'm gonna hit that target if it's the last thing I do. Well, that's the way, Davy. When we Howards want something bad enough, we don't let a little ache stop us, do we? No. Now, you gotta keep the rifle butt snug against the shoulder. Right? Now remember what I told you. The target's gotta stay right on top of the sight. Take a deep breath, hold, and squeeze the trigger. All right, let me see you do it. <laughs> You're getting there. Here, let me show you. Ma! Hi. Oh, how's my boy? Oh, how I've missed you. You must have grown two inches. Hello, darling. Welcome home, Marcia. Why didn't you let us know you were coming back today? We'd have met you. Oh, well, I, I wanted it to be a surprise. Oh. How's Edith? Oh, fine, fine. She doesn't have pneumonia after all. I'm glad to hear it. And the trip? Well, it was, it was long and tiresome, you know. Here, I got you something. I hope you like it. Well... I'm home now, and if I know you two, you haven't had lunch. Huh? Is it lunchtime? Is it lunchtime? It's two o'clock. You're absolutely right, Marcy. We forgot all about eating. Oh, didn't shame we? on you, too. Oh, Adam, before I forget, this telegram was at the house. Oh. Room. Well, I have a surprise for everybody. We're going on a long trip, all of us this time. A trip? Where to? Stockton. I have some business there. Oh, boy! Stockton. Oh, Adam, if, if it's a business trip, you, you don't want Davy and me along. No reason why a man can't travel with his family, Marcy. No, of course not. 
But I just got back, and I've got so many things to do. I've got the Forbes coming to dinner, and on Thursday I have plans... That... Sure, those things can be postponed. I thought you'd be pleased. You haven't been to Stockton in years. We'll have a chance to see our dear friend Jared Barkley again. You'll like that, won't you? Yes. Yes, I, I'd like that. All right. Then it's settled. We leave tomorrow. How are you? It's good to see you. Hey, wait a minute. Let me have a look at you. You know something? I think you've grown about three feet. Well, Jared, it's good to see you again. Good, good to see you, Adam. Look at this man, Marcy. He hasn't changed a bit. Six years. Handsome as ever. <laughs> You're looking pretty fit yourself. And Marcy, you are just what this old town needs. A fresh breeze. It's good to see you. It's good to see you, too, Jared. Old friends like you two shaking hands? I'd say a kiss was more in order. Well, Adam, your letter didn't say. Business or pleasure? A little of both. Now, don't tell me you finally decided to expand into Stockton. Oh, blame it on yourself. When we were together in San Francisco, you never stopped boosting this town. I'm finally doing something about it. I'm going to look around and investigate a few things. And if I know you, you've already investigated. You're on to me, Jared. I may have done just that. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll round up the luggage. Davy, want to give me a hand? We'll take the luggage down here. So that's... Jared, I've got to talk to you. What's that? Not here. Tomorrow afternoon. Mom! Hey, Mom! I thought you were going to help your father. Can I go fishing tomorrow? Yes. I think that'd be a wonderful idea. You know, I know just the place. I used to go there when I was a little girl. River Grove. Oh, boy! <laughs> Isn't this a lovely place, David? I've had some wonderful times here. Pa should have come with us. Why didn't he? Well, he was busy, you know. Some other time. Where's that stream? Oh, it's just up the way. Hello there. Look, Ma, it's Uncle Jared. Oh, what a nice surprise. Hey, young fella, come on up here. That boy. David and I were having a little picnic. I'm sure there'll be enough for you. Oh? I'm going fishing. You're going fishing? Well, now, Davy, that might be kind of tough to do. We're right in the middle of a drought, and that old stream is all dried up. Isn't there any place I can catch me some fish? No, no, I'm afraid there isn't. Hey, I got an idea. Didn't you used to collect rocks? You can collect rocks anywhere. Yeah, but can you collect gold nuggets just anywhere? Gold? Big as your fist. Washed down out of those hills into that dried up old stream, just waiting for some young fella like you to come along and scoop them up. Really? Well, I'm... Uh, I'm not going to guarantee anything, but I figure it's worth a try, don't you? Where is it? Right over there. Mom, going to strike me some gold. Be careful, David. Thanks for coming. I don't think this was a very good idea, Marcy. I have a feeling, I have a feeling Adam knows about our meetings. Well, how could he know? I don't know. I should have told him. I mean, he couldn't have come here just on business. Well, you don't know anything for sure, though, do you, Marcy? No, I... I, I just have a feeling that it, it's something to do with us. Well, you have a feeling, but you don't know anything for sure. When we met, he seemed to be the same old self. Oh, no, Jaron. No, you've worked for him. You know him better than that. He's always his, his most charming when he's about to break someone. Oh, 
Richard, I'm scared. What are we going to do? We don't do anything. We just wait. All we know for sure is that he's here on business. <sighs> much longer. If there's the rest of the herd, that creek on the south range is bone dry. Well, now, it was full up two days ago. It takes more than two days for a creek to dry up. Unless Fred Brady dammed it up on his end. Well, now, why would he do that? I don't know. Let's go find out. All right, yeah. <laughs> Fence for what they're usually for to keep our stock in everybody else is out any water in that creek up there plenty of water Well, now, uh, You better have a talk with your boss Wouldn't do you any good if he thinks he's gonna dam up a creek in the middle of a drought Oh, well, we better straighten him out now. You just better stay right where you are look we've been sharing that creek with Brady for years well, Now that might be but it ain't his place anymore. That's all this place been sold. To who? Pa? Can you take me riding today? I'm busy. You can see that, can't you? Maybe later? Not today. Tomorrow? We'll see, David. We'd better go now and let your father get back to his work. To get my gloves. Adam, whatever it is, please don't take it out on him. Thank you. Uncle Jared! Hello, Davy. Can you take me riding today? Riding? Sorry, young fellow. I wish I could. You'll have to settle for your mother's company, David. Hello, Jared. Hello, Marcy. Adam. Maybe we can have another picnic at River Grove. Another picnic? Yes. David and I were picnicking the other afternoon, and well, Jared rode by, so naturally. Uh, you invited him to stay, naturally. Well, we better go on and let these men do their work. Nice to see you again, Jared. Nice to see you, Marcy. Hi, Jared. That's fine, Adam. Can I get you a drink? Thank you. I uh, stopped by to discuss with you the damming up of Brady Creek. Actually, Nick wanted to come, but he tends to be just a little bit impulsive. Yes, I heard that about him. You should really watch that. Now, about the creek. When I acquire new property, I fence it in as promptly as possible. Fencing is one thing, Adam. Damming it up is another. You need that water. You bet we do. We have 500 head of prime beef that need watering. With the drought, we stand a chance of losing them. There's enough water in that stream, Adam, for a dozen herds. I'm afraid I can't accommodate you, Jared. You're refusing us water? That's exactly what I'm doing. I don't understand, Adam. I thought we were friends. And I'm behaving like your worst enemy, and you would like to know why. Is that right, Jared? That's right, I would. Well, 
that start with Carson City? Six months ago. Does that answer your question? No. All right. Let's try Modesto, a week before last. Does that give you a clue? Now, please get out of here. I've got another appointment. Whatever you're thinking, Adam, you're wrong. Get out. So he's a real old close friend of yours, huh? Well, let me tell you something. That kind of man doesn't have any close friends. How do you think he built that empire of his? Oh, Nick, Adam is an empire builder, and I've heard he can be ruthless at times, but why, what would be his reason? Perhaps there's a reason we don't even know about. Is that possible? I get the distinct feeling that all of you think this has something to do with me. Well, he is your closest friend. Am I being accused of something? Accused of what, Jared? I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. I think maybe I'll have a talk with this Mr. Howard. You will not. I'll handle this. In the meantime, why can't you use the San Joaquin River? It's too rough a drive on a herd getting weaker every hour. This heat, they never make it. Well, there has to be an answer for this somewhere. I'll find it legally. You better find it, and fast, Jared. Those cattle need water, and legal or otherwise, we're going to get water to them. Barkley? How's that new baby of yours? Oh, he's come along just fine. Me and the missus want to thank you for the present you sent over. It's my pleasure. Uh, Miss Barkley, mm -hmm. I guess you'll find out sooner or later. I might as well be the one to tell you. Tell me what? Your son told me you just harvested your pear crop. That's right. They'll be here and ready for shipping sometime tomorrow. Well, I, I'm afraid we can't handle them. What do you mean? I'm sorry as can be, Miss Barkley, but I've got orders. From whom? It's all right, Slade. I'll handle it. Adam, I don't understand what... There's nothing to understand. My company has a right to refuse anyone's patronage. Your company? I've been a member of the board of directors for many years. I just decided to take a more active interest in company policy. I see. Well, what's the reason? I'm not obliged to give you any reason. Ship the pairs with some other company. But you're the only freight line in this area. And if you don't ship them, or an entire year's crop will be ruined. But even more important than that, Adam, you're our friend. Why are you doing this? Why? Now, you ask your son, Victoria. Ask Jared about my wife and about the Seventh Commandment. I brought you some coffee. Oh, my goodness. Last time I saw so many books, you were studying for your law degree. Well, I'm trying to find a legal basis to force Adam Howard to tear down that dam. Hmm? Stream is on his property. Yes, I know it's on his property, but there's such a thing as custom, such a thing as morality. Say, that smells good. I mean, does any man have the right, any man, to literally slaughter another man's cattle? That's what you say, but what does the law say? Well... Law says a man's property is his kingdom, his house is his castle, but there's a precedent for common usage. I intend to get Judge Lawson to issue an injunction based on that precedent. Jared, why is Adam doing this? That's not as important as stopping him. As long as this was just your business, I would never interfere, and you know it. But now it concerns all of us, the ranch, all of us. I spoke to Adam today, very briefly, but he said something odd. He said to ask you about his wife and the Seventh Commandment.
Mother, I have never had an affair with Marcy Howard. Then what is it that makes Adam think so? All right. He found out that I met with Marcy. Met with her several times. These meetings. Why, Jared? I can't tell you that. You'll just have to trust me. All right, Jared. Have Silas bring you some sandwiches. You must be hungry. You're kind of busy. Yes, I'm very busy. I said I'm very busy, David. Now, what is it you want? I wanted to give you this. I made it. It's a present for you. Thank you, David. I sure did need a new tobacco pouch. I was going to save it until Christmas. But I don't know. I just wanted to give you something now. Well, that's... That's very nice. I guess I've been in a lot of trouble to you on this trip. Getting in the way, and always asking to go riding. I bet that made you mad at me. Mad at you? Why do you think that? Well, not mad exactly. But I don't know. You just act different. That's all. Like, well, like you didn't want me around anymore. If I did something wrong, Pa, I didn't mean to. When I get back in school, I'll do all my lessons every night without having to be told. I promise. Oh, I know you will, Davy. I know you will. I wish we could go home so things would be the way they were before. You and Mother and me, together. You know, the way it was. The way it was. It will be the same when we get home, won't it, Pa? I guess I'm bothering you again. David, I hope you're not interrupting your father. I'm going shopping. I'd like it if you could come with me to help carry the packages. Do you need anything, Adam? No. No, thank you, nothing. Come on, David. Don't you understand me, Jared? They're dying. Every day, every hour, they're dying. You ride out there with me right now, and I'll show you a dozen new carcasses. Nick, I know they're dying. Now, I have already told you. I filed a brief for an injunction with... The Dr. devil with your briefs! We're talking about water for cattle! Now, Nick, you listen to me. These things take time. 
He has to study the legal precedents. Now, you know Judge Lawson, he's a fussy old man, likes to chew an issue from all sides. The cattle can't wait for a judge to chew issues. I'm seeing him again first thing in the morning. I'm pushing him all I can. Well, you better push him a little harder. Judge Lawson. I was just coming to see you. Have you reached a decision on my brief yet? Interesting, Jared. Extremely interesting. Yes. Under the common usage precedent, it would seem the stream comes under the heading of public right of way. Well, then what you're saying is that Adam Howard had no right to dam up that stream. Well, it would seem so, but uh, there are certain gray areas. What do you mean, gray areas? Judge, I dug up more than a dozen cases, surely enough to establish that... You may be right, Jared. You certainly may, but I'll want to hear both sides in court. In court? But I could take days, even weeks. Judge, you've got ample precedent to issue that injunction right now. Well, possibly, but I'm from the old school, Jared. I believe a court should render decisions, not issue injunctions. Judge, our cattle are dying right now, just as though they were being systematically slaughtered. It's been a terrible drought, no question. Then why can't you issue that injunction? I've tried to explain to you, Jared. And I think maybe I'm beginning to understand. Adam Howard bought that land and everything else he can get his hands on. Does that include you? I'll take into account exactly how much you have at stake, Jared, and how overwrought you are. We in. See Howard. Jared asked us to wait a couple of days. He said you wouldn't, eh? If you recollect, I said I'd think about it. And the more I think about waiting for Judge Lawson and now waiting for the court in Sacramento and then maybe waiting for the Supreme Court, I think it's best that you and Jared wait. I'll see to Howard. Come on, get it. Get it. Yeah. Foley, I want you to check with the railroad about a spur for the new property. Olson, come on in. A Smith, huh? Well, another Barkley. Wouldn't it save time if you all came down here at once? I'd like to ask you a few questions, Mr. Howard. I don't have to answer, Mr. Barkley. Well, you're gonna hear him anyway. You're quite wrong. I have some business to discuss with these men. Now, will you please excuse me? Well, I have some business to discuss with you, Mr. Howard. It's about water. I've said all I'm going to say about that water. Why are you doing this to us? You ask your brother, Jared. Now get out of here, Barkley. What's Jared got to do with it? Well, you heard Mr. Howard. Now get going. I don't want any trouble. to his ranch. Make it down to that fence. He'll try to get his cattle through. Oh, no. What's wrong? What's going on here? Take him out the back way. Nothing to worry about, Mrs. Howard. Just a troublemaker. Everything's all right. Mother, that man, is he dead? Adam, I've got to 
talk to you. Now. All right. You should have seen it. David, you promised Aunt Edith you'd write her a letter. Now, I want you to go into your room and do that right now. I just wanted to tell Pa about the marriage. I'll tell him. I'll tell him. You write that letter now, and you're through. I'll look it over for mistakes. Do I have to now? Yes, David. Go write that letter. All right. Adam, that was Nick Barkley. That's right. You're trying to ruin a whole family, tear down everything they've built because of Jared. Because of Jared, exactly. Adam, you're wrong about Jared. No more lies, Marcy. I've got reports from a private detective just before we came down here. Reports that give dates, places, hotel registers that you both signed. Are they all lies, Marcy? No. No. We met. I could never tell you why we met before now. Well. All right, Marcy. Tell me. I'm telling Aunt Edith about the drought, but I don't think I'm spelling it right. D R O U G H T. D O U G H T. It still looks funny, but I guess I'll never be a champion speller. Look at it, Pa. Is it right? Yes. Yes, baby, it's right. Look at my handwriting. That's getting better, too, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Much better, Davy. Much better. Now go ahead and finish that letter. I guess there won't be any horseback riding today. No. No, I don't think so, Davy. Now go ahead and finish the letter. All right, Marcy. The truth. Go on. I'm listening. I can't. I, I just can't. When, when did all this start? I mean, were you in love with Jared when you married me? And then just went on pretending oh, that everything was Adam, fine? I do love you. You've made me happier than I ever thought I could be. Oh, I don't believe you, Marcy. Not after those reports. Do you know how much I loved you, Marcy? Those 15 years with Cora were good years. But there was always something missing. A child, a son. When she died, I thought I'd never marry again. Then I met you, beautiful Marcy, young enough to be my daughter. And I fell in love. A wonder of wonders, a child, a boy, my son, Davy. I was a lucky man, wasn't I, Marcy? At my age, begetting a son, someone to inherit my name, to take over everything I worked for. And I loved my son. And I loved you, Marcy, for giving him to me. But what did you really give me, Marcy? Some other man's child? Yes. Another man's child. Jared Barclays. No! All right, Adam, you wanted the truth. Now you're going to hear it, the whole truth. You were right. I did deceive you. At first, because I was a, a, a stupid, thoughtless girl. But later on, because I loved you. All those meetings with Jared, and you say you love me? Jared's only proud, and this was to... Try and help me save my marriage, our marriage. I was 
in love with a man. A man who had no goodness, no kindness in him. And most of all, no love for me. When you went to London, I saw him again. But only long enough to say goodbye. To tell him that I was in love with my husband. Adam Howard. But it was a little too late for goodbyes. Because I was already carrying his child. <laughs> Two years ago, he came to the house. He wanted to... Uh, he wanted to borrow some money. He saw David. He noticed the resemblance. And he knew. Then he wanted to borrow more than just a few dollars. I was so scared, I, I didn't know what to do. I said I'd get it for him. I wrote to Jared. I said, please meet me in Carson City. I need help. And he just came running to help you, is that it? He said, forget about paying the blackmail. And I should come to you right away with the truth, but I couldn't. I just couldn't. There didn't seem to be any way out. Until Jared checked into his background. Found out that he was a wanted man. And he told him to, to leave the country. My last meeting with Jared was in Modesto. When he told me I was finally free of him, he'd gone to Mexico. That's the truth. There was no other man. It was Jared. Oh, Adam. No, Jared just tried to help me, help us. Claire! Now, I want you and your son out of here by the time I return. Do you hear me? Adam, where are you going? That's no concern of yours now. Adam! Is shooting Jared gonna make you feel better? Ma? David. Uh, David, I want you to pack your things. We're leaving. We're going home? No, no. But I thought instead of you having to write Aunt Edith, we could go for a visit. What about Pa? Uh, well, he won't be able to come with us. He has to do something. You said he was going to shoot somebody. Uncle Jared. No, he's not going to shoot anyone. Now, you get your things together. If Pa's going to stay, I want to stay too, Ma. Oh, Davey. <laughs> Look, it, sometimes things happen between a man and a woman. It's nothing to do with you, so don't blame yourself. But, um, your father doesn't want us to be with him anymore. But why? Because it's so hard to explain. Tell me. I will. I will when I come back, okay? Give me a big hug. I have to go and do something very important. You promise me you'll be all right, huh? I'll be all right. It's my boy. Okay. I'll be back as soon as I can. All right, let's get him out of here. Swing, come on, come on. We've got work to do. Get him, my own. Get out of here. Put that door front. Yeah. All right, let's go. Okay. <laughs>
Nick. Uh, Nick, are you hurt? Uh, how'd I get here? Somebody just delivered you in a wagon. Adam Howard. Looks like that talk didn't work out, huh? We didn't talk. Anyway, it's all right with me. I'm through talking anyway. I get them cattle to water. You think you're gonna get them through that fence? That's what I think. Just like that? Just like that. Now, the cattle and the men are all ready to go. You going with us or not? Nick, that's big trouble. Then stay here. I'll get saddled. Come on. to you. Your friend Howard's what happened to me. I told you to stay away from him. I know what you told me, but I've got a whole herd of thirsting cattle out there. And for your information, I'm taking them onto the Brady's Creek. Then I trust you've made arrangements at the local funeral parlor. No more talk. We tried it your way, Jared. We tried it. It did not work. Now, you listen to me, Nick. What you're planning to do is wrong, dead wrong. And if you think I'm gonna let that hard head of yours get you killed, you got another thing coming. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Jared. Will you wait a minute? I'm, uh, sorry, big brother. I'll get Silas to look after him. I'll meet you up on the North Ridge. All Here you are, Mr. Jarrett. Just lay still for a while. Nick and Heath are gone, huh? To that fence. There's going to be trouble. Kill him. Don't you worry, Silas. There won't be if I can help it. Oh, Jarrett. Oh, thank God you're all right. What is it, Marcy? Oh, Jarrett, I, I told him. I, I told him everything. And he didn't believe one word of it, Jared, not one word. And he took his rifle when he left. He didn't believe you, huh? Well, Marcy, looks like we've passed the time for truth and understanding. Well, now it's a time for guns, is that it? You show me a way to stop it. Jared, wait a minute! Jared! said. Here they come. Hold it, mister. Nobody gets through. Like I said, somebody's gonna get killed. Nick, no. You're here to stop us, Jared. You're on the wrong side of the fence. I'm not here to stop you, Nick. I'm going with you. Bringing these cattle through. Try it. 
And they're dead men! Things you don't understand. That's what Mother said. Things I can't understand. Well, maybe I can't. But I sure as heck can't understand you not wanting to be my father anymore. Oh, it has nothing to do with you, Davy. Your mother. It happened a long time ago. I don't know what happened a long time ago, and I don't care. All I know is that I'm your son and you're my father. Ain't that so? Yes. That's so, Davy. But there's more to it. There's no more to it. If you're my father, you just can't up and stop being it. You just can't do that. You just can't. Bolton! Foley! The rest of you, tear this fence down, fast! Is that clear? You got it out here. You can get it back. What a lovely sound. The most beautiful music I've ever heard. Jared! So ends the beautiful music. Oh, if the rain keeps up, I'm going to trade my horse in for a boat. Ah. No pleasing him. That's the first good drink our cattle have had in months. Yeah, if they don't drown first. Here. Thank you. Oh, Jared, I uh, picked up a letter for you. Oh, you? thank you. Well, I'll be. It's from little Davy Howard. Let's see what he has to say. Dear Uncle Jared, Mother and Father and I are all fine. I hope you are, too. There's going to be a big party here soon. It is their anniversary. Father is going to write you and invite you and your family to come. Oh, I sure Jared. hope you'll be there, your friend David Howard. I'd love to go. <laughs> I think it'd be a good idea. 
Let's have dinner. And we must start thinking about an appropriate gift. Well, now, Mother, what do you get a couple that's finally got everything?